Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's Liberty Kids service. But before we go into praise and worship, let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for today, and we thank you, Lord, for everybody that is attending this service. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to guide this service. In Jesus' name, amen. It's time for praise and worship. Celebrate the Lord tonight. He is worthy of praise. We bless you, Jesus. Put your hands together, somebody. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Woo! Everybody, give the Lord to a dance. Over here, 
Hello Liberty Kids Global, welcome to today's Bible teaching from wherever you tune in in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How was your week? Yes, how was your week? What did you get up to? Oh, whatever you got up to, I hope you had an amazing time and you had loads of fun. So today we're going to be learning about the healing of Naaman. Can I hear you say it? The healing of Naaman. Well done. I'm going to ask for something next. Do you know what that is? Yes, I'm going to ask for your Bible. Do you have a Bible? And do you have a pen and a notebook? Because you're going to be learning a lot today. If you do, well done. If you don't, what are you waiting for? Hurry up. Go get your Bible, a notebook and a pen because we're going to learn so much today. We're going to have so much fun learning and we're going to be writing a lot today. Well done. And if you have your Bible, can you open to 2 Kings chapter 5? 2 Kings chapter 5. Yes. So what are we waiting for? Let's go into the message. The healing of Naaman. You can find this in your Bible in 2 Kings chapter 5. The king of Aram had a great admiration for Naaman, the commander of the whole army of the country of Aram. Naaman was very rich and he had many servants. Even his wife had a young servant girl. She was from the country of Israel, brought to the country of Aram to be a maid in Naaman's house. Naaman was a mighty warrior, but he suffered from leprosy. Leprosy starts out as spots on the skin. Then the spots start becoming sore. One day, the young girl remembered the things that her parents had taught her when she was very little. She remembered Elisha, the prophet, and all the good things he did for God. Elisha could do miracles because Elisha was a prophet of God. So, she said to her mistress, I wish my master will go see the prophet in Samaria. He will heal him from his leprosy. When Naaman's wife told him about Elisha, he became very excited. Naaman went to see, went to his master and told him what the young girl from Israel had said. The king of Aram replied, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter he took to the king of Israel reads, With this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had turned his robes. He sent to him this message. Why have you turned your robes? Have the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a message to him to the messenger to 
say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed and healed. Naaman was very angry. Didn't Elisha know that he was an important army commander? How dare Elisha tell me to go and wash in the dirty Jordan River? If he wanted to wash in a river, if then he could have done that back in the country of Aram. Naaman was so angry that he started to head for home. Please, sir, Naaman said Naaman's servants, we really want you to be well again. It will be an easy thing to wash in the Jordan River seven times. We have come such a long way. Why don't you try it? Naaman wanted his leprosy to go away too. So he went to the Jordan River. He went to the river and washed. Then he washed again. He did it seven times, just as Elisha had said Naaman came out of the water and looked at his skin. The leprosy spots were gone. His skin looked perfect. It was as soft and smooth as a little child's skin. Naaman went straight back to Elisha's house. Naaman wanted to give Elisha all the gifts he had brought from Aram. But Elisha would not accept the gifts. He had not done this for the gifts. He told Naaman how to be healed because he wanted Naaman to know that God is real. Elisha, since I have been healed of my leprosy, Naaman said, I know that the God of Israel is real. And my wife's servant girl was right. If you will not accept my gifts, said Naaman, please let me, your servant, be given as much earth as a pair of moles can carry. For your servant will never again make bond offerings and sacrifice to any other God but the Lord. Hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from the teaching of the healing of Naaman. Hope you did. And did you take some notes? Well done. Well done for taking notes. Okay. So, it's discussion time. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the story. What did you learn? So what I learned is that Naaman declared that there was only one God. Yes, that there was only one God and there is only one God. When he received his healing and he said he would never again um, practice burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other God, right? Yeah, so number one, Naaman declared that there was only one God. Number two, what I learned is that Naaman listened. Yeah, he did. He listened to what the young girl told his wife about the prophet Elisha. And the young girl was very bold about sharing the good news of God to the world. See, she was bold and she was brave. And so she told, um, she told the good news about what God was doing. Yes, well done. Number three, Odell Naaman was angry and he was proud and he was about to go back. But what did he do? He had good people around him that spoke to him and advised him that you know what you if you really want to get healed and we do want you to get healed 
why don't you listen to the instruction from the prophet Elisha? And despite Naaman was angry, he listened. And what did he do? He went back to wash himself in the Jordan River seven times. He listened. So that's why we always have to have good people around us, good friends that can speak the truth, that can speak the right things to us so that we can do what is right. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Just imagine if Naaman didn't listen. What do you think would have happened? What do you think? Yes, he would have not gotten healed. He would have not got his healing. But because he listened and he obeyed the instruction that came from the prophet Elisha from God, he was healed. So we need to listen when God is speaking to us. Well done. Number four, Naaman also showed that he was grateful. Can you remember what he did and why he was grateful? Can you remember? He brought gifts to prophet Elisha. Although prophet Elisha didn't collect those gifts, he said, I was not doing this for the gifts. I was doing this because I want you to believe in God. I want you to know that there is only one God. But he, Naaman was grateful and he appreciated prophet Elisha. So that's why we need to appreciate people. We need to be grateful to people. Okay. Well done. And number five, God healed Naaman from leprosy and gave him a new, brand new skin, just like a little baby. Amazing skin, brand new, healthy life. God cares about our health and everything that concerns us. So today we need to learn that we need to believe that God cares about us. He cares about the littlest thing if we trust in him. So today, what have you learned? Can you tell me? Do you have it written in your notes so you don't forget? You can go back and read it so you always remember. So today, we have learned that God is a healer. Yes, God is a healer. We have learned that God is always with us. If we call on him, he will answer. Well done. And God wants us to obey his instructions. Mm, where can we find those instructions? Yes, we can find it in the Bible. We can find those instructions in the Bible. And God wants us to be surrounded with people who are kind and love God. Yes, people who are kind and who love God. Also, God wants us to pray to him in all seasons. Regardless of how you feel, you wake up in the morning, you pray. you working around a day at school, you pray. Everywhere, you can pray everywhere, wherever you want to pray, call on him and he will answer yes he will answer and you know what god wants us to be happy yes he wants us to be happy so i'm gonna leave you with a scripture to know that god wants us to be happy he doesn't want us to be afraid because he has not given us the spirit of fear but power love and a sound mind but the scripture i'm gonna give you today is in philippians 4 verse 6 Yes, Philippians 4 verse 6. Do you want to write that down and open up your Bible? Okay, well done. Philippians 4 verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request be known to God. Let's do it again. And we're going to do it with a little bit of energy. Let's go. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Oh, well done. So, always remember Philippians 4 verse 6. 
God doesn't want us to be anxious. God wants us to pray. He wants us to give thanks and pray for what we want. Okay. So, do you know what next? Let us pray. Yes, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for today's message. Thank you for what we have learned that you will always be with us and you are a great God. Thank you because we know that when we call on you, you would answer. Thank you because you said we should not be anxious. Thank you because you said you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. Thank you because you're always with us every single day. Thank you because when we open our Bibles and we read the word of God, he will speak to us and he will tell us what to do. Oh God, you are a great God. We love you. Thank you for protecting us and our families. Thank you for always being us. Thank you for putting a smile on our face. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.
Welcome back, everybody, and we hope you enjoyed the service. But before we let you go, let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for everybody that attended this service, and we thank you, Lord, for your successful service in general. We ask you to bless this week until the next service, and we ask you to bless all our families, all our friends, all those who love us and all those we love. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until next time, stay liberated.